17 people now confirmed dead from cholera in Hamanskra. We still don't know the actual source uh, of the infection, but results should be available, if not tonight, then perhaps uh, tomorrow. Cholera, of course, is a global challenge. Malawi, in particular, has been battling to control it for the past year and more. They've suffered more than 1,300 deaths. And I'm joined now by Dr. Chris Van Straten, the Global Health Advisor on Clinical Governance for International SOS. Uh, Doc, thanks so much for your time. Let's look at Malawi as a case study. Um, they are still battling with cholera. It's rampant, um, 1,300 people, if not more. How does cholera get so out of control? Good evening, and thanks so much for inviting me on the call. So cholera is endemic in many countries, and where it's endemic, there's usually been issues with sanitation, the provision of water, adequate uh, removal of waste and wastewater, and it is very infectious, but mostly where water sources have been contaminated or direct contact of food. And in Malawi in particular, they've recently had these big devastating storms. If you remember Hurricane Ricky causing massive flooding, that disrupted the water supply infrastructure and water was contaminated with fecal material and with cholera. And, and that's been pretty devastating for them. There's huge support coming in from WHO, UNICEF, and private and government partnerships. But in other parts of Africa, too, we've seen these outbreaks of cholera. And I think what we're experiencing is probably a combination of immigration patterns, people moving. We know that the previous case that we had, January, February, some of those cases were imported into the country, really quickly picked up, though, by NICD, who were able to contact trace and shut that down. So, as you said early on, what's critical with our outbreak here is to figure out where the source is, because until we do that, we can't intervene appropriately. How quickly and how easily does it spread? I understand it's, it's contamination, it's fecal matter, perhaps someone not washing their hands properly after going to the bathroom, but how quickly does it spread? Is it, is it a quick and silent spreader? Yes, it can be. So what's interesting with cholera is that you can have individuals who are infected but who are not symptomatic. In other words, they're not vomiting, they're not having diarrhea, they don't have a fever. And the problem there, if they're not meticulous with their hand hygiene, and they're now preparing food or make, come in close contact with other people, they can and will transmit the infection. And for those who are caring for people who have a diarrheal disease like cholera, so the healthcare providers, or a partner caring for someone who is sick, they're obviously at risk of, of picking up cholera. And you can usually become sick within 12 hours or 12 to 24 hours, sometimes up to five days. But it's usually in the first day or two, and you usually present with symptoms and signs of fever, vomiting, diarrhea. So yes, very infectious, and we need to, all of us, be aware and stick to those very good principles of washing your hands diligently yeah. when preparing meals, after bathroom, etc. Has cholera ever got into piped water? That is a really good question, and one that I would pose for the water specialists. To the best of my knowledge, it's mostly been where you have contaminated water, such as rivers mm -hmm. and sewage going into those rivers. In South Africa, that's a major concern. Because as we know, water sewage or treated sewage has, is being pumped into several water systems and into oceans. And as one of the experts spoke about earlier on Inca and also other media outlets was talking about, if it's treated appropriately, then you won't get these infectious agents like cholera or E. coli or hepatitis A ending up in the water supply. In terms of piping, if the water is treated appropriately, filtered, chlorinated, etc. it's very unlikely. Uh, I wouldn't say it's absolutely zero, but if you have a proper water infrastructure system, it shouldn't be the case. But I believe the tests are ongoing. I do know that some of those tests have come back negative mm. for cholera, but they'll need to keep testing and keep making sure 
that it is not being transmitted either in the tankers that are providing Hamans Kral or in the piped water. Talk to me about your experiences in Hamans Kral. You were there a few decades ago and even then there were water problems. Absolutely. I am I feel deeply saddened from, uh, from reading the articles and seeing what's happening in Hamans Kral. We were students over 20 years ago working in Hamans Kral in the clinic at Jubilee Hospital. And one of the projects that I was very proud of being a part of is we realized that there was an outbreak of diarrhea disease there. It was linked to E. coli and rotavirus. Uh, the community, the tap water there has been an issue for a long time. So they were using the local river to source their water for drinking, for cooking, for cleaning. And we took samples up and down that river. I know it very well. And we found a pipe that was leaking sewage into the river. That was the source. And why we were proud is we did several things. One, we contacted the municipality. Two, we got in touch with an environmental and group that would help to, one, make sure that that was blocked up. Two, that reed beds and the environment was restored. Hmm. So remember, natural ecosystems filter water. Natural ecosystems keep us safe and healthy. Um, but I, And that project, I believe, worked. But for evidently, things have, have hmm. not proceeded and have perhaps deteriorated. We, we have been warned um, by a number of water experts that this is not isolated in the sense that a lot of our water sources are contaminated, that a lot of our water treatment plants are ailing, have been neglected. Um, is there a risk that this cholera could spread far and wide? I mean, how at risk are we? Um, if you look at the way it's grown so quickly just in the last couple of weeks, are we at risk in South Africa of a Malawi-type situation, or are we dealing with a very different uh, set of challenges? Mm, that's a very good question, a very difficult question. The, I think the risks are real, and my main concerns at the moment would be for those living in the townships, especially where you have, like Ahmed Skral, rivers that are being accessed by the community, not just the water points, but the rivers, and that those rivers are severely contaminated. And to really fix the problem, by the way, it's worth looking at the WHO website, it's worth looking at the NICD web pages, and where cholera has been, let's say, cleaned out, or been, people have been able to push it back. And that's been, you must fix water access, so people can hygienically keep clean and wash and prepare food. You must remove wastewater and sewage appropriately. And then there are definitely steps that can be taken in terms of when there are outbreaks like this, we vaccinate in that community to give extra protection and heightened awareness in the community about potable water. So to get back to your question, it's our situation is distinctly different from Malawi. We have more infrastructure. Yes, infrastructure is under pressure, but it is different. We haven't had a massive storm like Hurricane Ricky disrupting major sources, but we certainly have at-risk communities like Haman Skral that are underserved, undersourced, and will remain to be vulnerable unless we take action now. All right, thank you so much for speaking to us. Really do appreciate uh, your insights. Uh, and that, of course, is Dr. Chris van Straten. He's the Global Health Advisor on Clinical Governance for International SOS, which, of course, is a health um, risk management group. Uh, making the point as well about Malawi, which is a risk to all of us in terms of climate change, increased flooding does bring increased risk of diseases like cholera. We saw what happened in KwaZulu-Natal after their floods. I'm thinking we were lucky not to see a big cholera outbreak there because we know the damage to infrastructure in KwaZulu-Natal when those floods occurred. Still ahead.